Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Solar System Interstellar with Exoplanets and Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I continue my investigation of the KSB Interstellar engines and see which ones we will be using first and which ones we'll be using later on based on their capabilities and uh, which ones I'll just toss out because I don't think they're going to be very helpful. Uh, well, I mean, unless I figure out how to use them a little bit better, of course. Uh, there are a lot of possibilities. I'm suspicious of this radiant drive thing, but we're going to move on to the Rosinante fusion drive. Now, in this video, I had wanted to break things up by actually visiting that asteroid that's auto-captured into Earth orbit. We'll probably make use of it at some point, but we need to see its uh, properties because it's only a class A. But then in real solar system, a class A can be really big. So we have to see whether it's useful or not. But the problem is that I can't really conduct that kind of mission right now because one of the fans on my GPU has died. And so my graphics card uh, is down to one fan, it had two fans. And so it tends to make a lot of noise and threaten to overheat and throttle down when I try to actually do anything lengthy in this particular install of KSP. Actually, KSP 2 takes less of the video card than this particular install of KSP 1. Uh, and that's because of all the mods that I have, especially the visual mods, uh, putting a lot of load on the video card. So, yeah. Uh, we are going to do things that only require a short amount of time in the flight scene, where it really taxes the video card, which means uh, testing more of the engines out. So, forgive me for that. Uh, I know uh, it's not exactly how I would run things, so we really should be not just going through engines. But it is sort of a good catalog of the engines because, again, looking through the KSP Interstellar Wiki is great and all, but it it's a lot of stuff, and it doesn't give you a good sense of which of the engines you want to pursue. And so hopefully this video also helps other people about well, this series of initial videos, helps other people to make decisions about the bewildering array of engines that we have available to us in KSP Interstellar. So that's my goal. So we will continue with the catalog engine, catalog of engines with the Rastanante Kerbstein Fusion Drive, which is very powerful. One of the comments on a previous video said, well, anything above a certain ISP is basically warp drive. Anything with an ISP is, well, I mean, I don't know. The thing is, we don't have rev relativity, do we? So I, I would have said that anything with a regular ISP like this uh, is subject to relativity, but KSP doesn't do relativity. So it might be right that uh, with a high ISP like we see on the Rosinante here, 500,000, because there isn't relativ relativistic effects, it would just accelerate to super light speeds, super luminal speeds, and yeah, but still, I feel like the warp drive is in a league of its own as far as superluminal speeds. Uh, it can easily go a thousand times the speed of light. So, yeah, well, anyway, we will organize these into a reasonable sort of uh, sequence. And I might install Community Tech Tree to help me out with that uh, to see what sequence might be good. But uh, something like the nuclear light bulb, I think, would be uh, earlier on. Uh, even though it's a very dangerous, dangerous thing that uh, basically has its reactor core melt. <laughs> but, uh, or the thermal rocket nozzle or stuff like that. These are the things that we will use fairly early on. And then something like this. Uh, well, we'll have to get a fur uh, distance into things before we get something with 500,000 ISP. So what do we need for a Kerbstein fusion drive? Does it just, it just needs fuel? It has its own fusion pellets. Let me see. Let's stick it on here. It gives some delta V, but not a whole lot. It delivers that delta V very quickly, but I guess if we had something with more fusion pellets, so it just it just uses raw fusion pellets, pure fusion pellets. Twenty thousand now seems that way. No change to the thrust to weight ratio. Now, what kind of radiators? We've got the radiators on here. What size do we need for this? Well, here it says weight heat production 500 megawatts, which is tiny. But then again, to make the Rosinante from the expanse, uh, you would sort of expect that because it doesn't really have really big radiators. So, 
I can't even make these any smaller and it's still 8 gigawatts. We could maybe even use regular radiators or flat ones that don't extend, which makes sense again because of the expanse being the context. Anyway, as it tries to push Space Station 5 here, we'll try this one. Rosinante Fusion Drive. I throttle down the video card so that it doesn't make too much noise. Hopefully that will get resolved soon. Okay, so does it really get to 20,000 is all I want to know. Or whether I need to add fuel or something else other than what we have here. It's really small out here because of all this business. Now nah, let's start to drive up anyway. Oh, now it's only getting 2,000. Aha! Aha. Scanning the 500,000. Oh, it, it's increased now. I'm only at low thrust though. Maybe if I'm at higher thrust, it will be better. I don't know. It's getting the full specific impulse. It doesn't say that it needs some other propellant. I mean, there is a speed of light thing here. It does have time dilation though. So apparently KSP Interstellar does do relativity or not, I'm not clear, but we definitely have the speed of light being specified and time dilation being a thing here. So I don't know how that actually works because I've used warp drives but not tried to go to relativ relativistic speeds with KSP Interstellar before. Okay, as we throttle up, uh, we get more of a plume and we also get more delta V. But anyway, we do get the 20,000. It does work very, very simply. You just need to tack on some extra fusion pellets on it. So, all right. And as far as the weight heat, waste heat is concerned, it's increasing, but the rate it's increasing at is decreasing. So maybe it won't get to a maximum, but maybe slightly larger radiators would be good. Nice, very directed plume. All right. Of course, getting more Delta V would be trivial. We just have a bigger one of these. So, if you're willing to burn for a day and 15 hours, you can get a million out of it. But anyway, let's set that aside for now. Thermal ramjet nozzle, I'm going to set aside because it's for atmospheric flight. Um, Aerospike Z pinch fusion, fusion engine. Now, I've tried one of these before. But I don't remember much about it. Somebody had recommended it. So this is the Z-Pinch Fusion Engine. It's an aerospike that has a Z-Pinch Fusion Reactor, magnetic nozzle, and a thermal aerospike turbojet. Ultimate all-in-one solution. Six integrated air intakes. Is that an air intake? I guess so. Doesn't look like there's six of them, but we're blocking it. <laughs> um, can use any neutral or mildly oxidizing propellant, including oxygenated atmospheres. So, so that's a pretty wide range of atmospheres that it's talking about. Maybe including Mars's CO2, I don't know. Fusion pellets again. Uh, we've got liquid helium up here. I don't see that it says anything about wanting liquid helium, but the liquid helium definitely changes the delta V. Fuels, liquid helium to fusion pellets. Okay, so a ratio of one liquid helium to a uh, tiny, tiny bit of fusion pellets. So that's nice. And there's a selected ISP. Um, that's a little bit weird because it's not going down again. Um... So fusion type is helium, hydrogen, we'll use liquid hydrogen, pure fusion pellets. Pure fusion pellets gets you the 1.5 million ISP that we've seen before with the magnetic nozzle. Though this is a very small magnetic nozzle, but the max thrust is only 3.4 kilonewtons with pure fusion pellets. Throw some hydrogen in and it's 217 kilonewtons. Maybe they should have some fuel with the Rosinante engine. I mean, they could throw something dense in just for the heck of it. Um, 
But the ISP is only 15,000 if it's not pure fusion pellets. And then 11,000 with the liquid helium that we're carrying. 9,000-ish there. Only 4,000 with liquid nitrogen. 4,500, 1,250 with HTP. Liquid water, you can get 1,178 out of fusion. Now, CO2, we could breathe that apparently and get 1,000 out of it. Compressed air, so if we were just air breathing around Earth, it's just 665. And yeah, the intake matches that. So what it says here with the 665, that's just with air breathing. But we're not doing air breathing. We're going to do rocket mode with the helium. We could do hydrogen, but helium is just a little bit denser. So that's why I think we went with helium here. And yeah, let's just make sure it works. Well, down here it's not great, but that's probably because it's not an atmospheric engine. Well, wait a minute, it is an atmospheric engine, just maybe not in this mode. Okay, now it says 10 minutes. I don't have RCS on here, so we'll just... Can this gimbal? Yes, it does have a gimbal. It's a tiny bit of thrust, 7,000 seconds of ISP, that's okay, right? But then again, it's fusion. Fusion should definitely wait for all the fission stuff to happen first. But we might have some very exotic fission things happening. So yeah, just a reminder that uh, Asteroid is like that. That's the one that we want to pay attention to eventually. And check out but we could have other asteroids this at class H but wrangling them isn't a good idea I don't think if they decide to capture themselves that's fine but it takes a lot of energy to try and capture a real solar system asteroid okay it's doing what it said it would do and oops I can't use that throttling up we get 475 let's see if we really only get 3.4 if we switch it to fusion pellets alone uh, so, with the helium, we get 10,000. With the fusion pellets, we also get 10,000, but it takes a day. The reason we get the same amount is because we're not carrying that much mass of fusion pellets. If this tank was full of fusion pellets, we get a lot more delta V. Of course, it would take an enormous amount of time. As we throttle up, we do see that we get the 3.4 kilonewtons. And it has a rather lackluster sound to it. It's like one of those tiny engines, like the ant engine sound. But uh, basically it's ant engine thrust, just very efficient. Okay, so it does what it's supposed to do. That is the Aerospike Z pinch fusion engine for you. As far as the waste heat is concerned, it does contribute to it and we probably should have radiators on this. I think, let's see if it eventually shuts down this, uh, maybe this other mode generates the same waste heat because it's the same reactor of course but just checking nice to have dual modes like this could be useful mega jewels going down and it explodes i like that i like that it explodes because of the waste heat that's good all right so yes we do need radiators for that but tested successfully otherwise Laser transmitter, the warp drive, aluminum photon sail, antimatter catalyzed fusion plasma engine. It says only 10,000 ISP. Not for all that business, surely. Okay. This is uh, antimatter catalyzed fusion plasma engine, and this is an antimatter catalyzed fusion reactor. Large quantities of antimatter can be used directly to eliminate those dumb thrust ISP trades and spiral out of orbit even faster. Okay. We'll see about that. Let's just see. What happens if we just slap one on? Nothing. It has a built in radiator, it doesn't have built in antimatter. 
Okay, having plenty of antimatter doesn't change things. It needs a propellant. Liquid hydrogen will give 32,000 seconds of ISP. It's got helium-3 built in because it's fusion and all. Phil, antimatter catalyzed, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, 76,000 meters per second, very good thrust, as it promised. And if we dump the antimatter, it still gives us the delta V, but I'm pretty sure we need the antimatter. But I don't think we need anything else except for radiators. Well, that'll do the trick. Let's make sure it's doing what it says it's going to do. Fusion reactor plasma heating cannot be guaranteed reduce power consumption or add more energy storage. Okay, uh, do we, well, we've got megajoules here. Hmm. Okay, it's happy once we throttle up. Megajoules start building. Does gimbal. Waste heat is not building at all. And there's an ISP of nearly 30,000 with the hydrogen. It's got those charged particles. But it seems okay with our current thrust, but if I go higher, it auto-balances auto the charged particles. That helium-3 is going away real fast though. I throttle up. Both the helium-3 and deuterium are going away. I don't think they're gonna last two hours, so we're going to have to not only pack this much hydrogen, but pack more of those. Let's just see what happens when it gets depleted. Oh, switching to alternative fuel mode. Uh, it's using the Deuterium lithium-6, which I guess is lithium de deuteride. Okay, so the helium-3 goes away, and actually the specific impulse in this alternate mode is higher? 33,000, is that right? So why didn't we start on that in the first place? Okay, so we don't need to pack extra helium-3, it looks like. We're doing just fine without it. And the deuterium there has stopped being used. We should just start in this mode, probably. It probably doesn't matter, though. Okay, so maybe that'll last uh, two hours after all. Good thing I checked. All right, let's revert flight. So then they just have a reactor with integrated thermal and charged particle electrical generators. So maybe... When we had those charged particle engines, this could have been good, or the magnetic nozzle that needed charged particles. Atmospheric particle scoop. <laughs> That's just one of those, those parts, I guess. Let's see. What does it look like? Whoa, my god, it's big. You want to put that in an atmosphere? That better be, like, Jupiter. Um, or something. High in Jupiter's atmosphere, obviously, where it's thin. Collecting hydrogen or something. I don't even know how that works, but if we could refuel like that, you know, a lot of the sci-fi ships, like in Elite, for instance, they sort of skim the upper atmosphere of stars in order to get their fuel. If this can do that, that's an idea. Of course, it's huge, but if we can retract it, that'd be good. How big is it? Does it know? A hundred meters, basically. Interesting animation for that. Okay, so we've got one of those. Beam core antimatter engine, as opposed- Oh, I've seen this one before. We did this one before, right? And then it's got an associated reactor. Boussard fusion engine. Well, when I saw the atmospheric scoop, I immediately thought of the Boussard engine. It seems to have Delta V all on its own. Ultimate Interstellar Fusion Engine. Boy, there's a lot of competition for Ultimate Interstellar Fusion Engine around here, though. 
capable of converting hydrogen directly into a highly efficient thrust. It can even use material collected from magnetic scoops to supply additional fuel. So maybe if we could get the atmospheric scoop on and then scoop around uh, around Jupiter or the sun or whatever. I don't know if it'll work or not, but maybe I should just cheat it into a wood around Jupiter and see. We'll have half a tank of hydrogen here to give room. And oh, interestingly, it's not using the hydrogen. The reducing the hydrogen actually increases our delta V. What are you using then? It's got solid hydrogen here. You can't use the liquid hydrogen at all? 2.7 million seconds of ISP. I can only imagine where they got that from. <laughs> um, that's really fast to be shooting stuff out at. I don't know. It doesn't seem to have a mode changer as far as I can tell. Fuel limiter, I don't know. Light speed limiter, one. See, you can't do warp, uh, you can't compete with the warp drive for this. But... We can't scoop solid hydrogen, right? It said scooping, but we're gonna get hydrogen gas like that. There is a liquid hydrogen hydrogen thing here, but I don't know what it does. Well, okay, we're going to remove the tank. Well, let's just unfuel the tank, let's say. I want the radiators anyway. Okay. And we'll underfuel this as well. We'll have half full of that. No, whatever you think is the minimum. Okay. So we can see our hydrogen amounts right now. Maybe I should have put a hydrogen gas thing. Deploy scoop. Oh, the animation is much slower out here. Maybe I should try to be in daylight. Oh, oh, things are overheating. Okay, but that was just... Well, that's something we have to worry about. Sometimes in time warp, things overheat when they're not supposed to overheat. Oh, but that's overheating anyway. Um, why? Why are you overheating? Is it super delicate? Okay, well, let's just quickly try and get this done. Start atmospheric extra extraction. Well, we're getting a lot of liquid hydrogen. Now, what, what does this do for us? Anything? I think we filled up the solid hydrogen there. Okay. Um, throttle up. Uh, all our megajoules went away. So we need a different reactor. Maximize thrust on is interesting. Max effective thrust here, it says zero there, but it also says 135 here, but then this says 11. Oh, it says 11 up there. There's too many thrusts. <laughs> Insufficient electricity is the issue. So, okay. And it's taken all our electric charge and all our megajoules, so we need some additional reactor on it, it seems. Okay, so let's revert flight and slap one on. But the scoop sure seemed to work, and it worked to give us liquid hydrogen, which I was not expecting. I was expecting it to... Uh, but then this can convert hydrogen to liquid hydrogen, but it didn't have that bar out there. And we didn't set it to greater than 0%, so it seems like the scoop just took liquid hydrogen in instead of hydrogen gas, which I was not expecting. Uh, but let's just go for a reactor here. Do you want antimatter catalyzed or... This is a beam core antimatter, but let's not do antimatter. Let's just keep, keep it to happy fusion or something. Muon Catalyzed Fusion Reactor. Alright, let's try it now. I don't know if I needed anything else for the Muon Catalyzed Fusion Reactor. Okay, back out here. Well, let me 
me time warp. Okay, well, it got overheating again. Just wanted to be in daylight. Okay, so, well, let's start the engine and start it going. It says two hours now. Oh, now it's really going. 1,000 kill newtons. Really gets hot. Where the heck is Jupiter anyway? So as current thrust, it can go for two hours. And it is getting 2.7 million seconds of ISP. But now we can deploy the scoop. Oh, the scoop fairings broke our <laughs> broke our radiator. So that's an interesting side note. Um, you might want to angle the radiators such that the fairings do not break them. Could be a good idea. Okay, start extraction. We filled up our liquid hydrogen. And so if we use this to replenish our liquid hydrogen, uh, solid hydrogen, we can just pump it up to that. And effectively, at least around here, we've got infinite fuel. Our delta V is not going down as we accelerate. But okay, uh, how high up around Jupiter does that hold, though? So extra numbers. The heating might have been because we were so close to Ju uh, Jupiter. Okay, right now we're pretty high up around Jupiter. Insufficient storage, it says here. Stop. But, I mean, we've got liquid hydrogen storage. Current atmospheric extraction still says insufficient storage. But maybe it's just waiting for it to get below 95% or something. Still up here, where our delta V is not really going down. But then again, maybe that's just because we're not using that much of the liquid hydrogen. But okay, at least the Bussard fusion engine works. Maybe a bit too well. I don't know. A cyclotron particle accelerator. Fusing light isotopes into heavier isotopes. Well, mostly we want to break things apart to turn or turn them into antimatter. We want to smash them together. It takes protium, protium, and makes deuterium. Well, we've seen deuterium being necessary. So it's taking, but what it's taking is hydrogen and turning it into de deuterium, which is good. That's important. And this is a positron factory. Now we're talking. That's antimatter. And so. It has positron storage, which I hope gets read as antimatter, because I mean this this antimatter containment unit this says antiproton as opposed to positron, and it's called antimatter. So I hope positrons get read as antimatter, or what? Maybe we need to refine the antimatter into something. It is a factory, so should give us a final product, hopefully. Anyway, obviously we would have to attach power to it. And I don't know how quickly it manufactures our antimatter. Maximum, though the power requirement for storage is 20 kilowatts. It doesn't say how quickly it manufactures. This manufacturing me method is less efficient than the, than the free electron laser but fits into a more convenient package. Where is this free electron laser? Free electron laser. Oh, that's not too bad. This has a whole beam generator thing. But we don't want that, do we? Well, this is for a laser beam. No, I wanted antimatter. Fixed antimatter collector. 
requires a Kerbal to set up. I don't want a Kerbal anywhere near something that collects antimatter, but anyway. Okay, so we've got a fixed antimatter collector down there. There's a drop tank, deployable antimatter collector, okay. So that's sort of like that, but it's like this instead. Wonder why they look like that. And I still need to make them shinier instead of, oh, it's got more animation. Make it shinier instead of stock-like. Okay. So we've got that deployable one. Deployable photovoltaic receiver, diamagnetic antimatter container. But now this has anti-hydrogen. I sure hope our antimatter thing was recognized the positrons and anti-hydrogen as antimatter. Okay, receiver, receiver. Oh, uh, electrodeless Lorentz force thruster. It says, with a thrust measured in kilonewtons and a 11,000 ISV. Well, I mean, at least that's not crazy. You can go to Leif, Val, Tylo, and Paul. I mean, it's pretty heavy, six tons. But basically, is this the package or do we need the reactor? No, we don't. Well, it seems like we don't. Do we? Let's find out. 27,000. Thrust weight ratio of 1. Novel type of plasma thruster. No, there's a uh, paper on it. Well, it's doing something without any other reactor. Convenient package. So this might not be too, this might be relatively early on. 160 kilonewtons. Why does it say a year? It seems like it'll be done way before a year, right? The kilowatt hours are going down. But that's for the core. That's not what this presumably uses. Thrust zero. I'm confused. It clearly has a thrust. But here it says thrust zero. And it says current thrust in space 0 0.009 kilonewtons. Nowhere in this window does it say it's actually producing that thrust. Which probably explains why it's showing the stage time like that. It's clearly producing that thrust, but the stage time is based on that, probably. Hmm. Well, uh, it's not as sus as I thought it was, but it's pretty suspicious still. Electrostatic anti-proton storage ring. That's got antimatter as the thing. It's supposed to be for anti-proton. Anyway, electrostatic particle trap. So we have various ways to try and get antimatter apparently. This says antimatter storage here. I don't see where it's storing the antimatter though, because it just says solar wind there. And apparently you can pack some solar wind. But here it's not showing oh I guess maybe we can switch tanks. Now it can carry positrons and antimatter. I feel like I need something that can convert positrons into antimatter, but I'm not sure. I hope, I hope they just understand that. Okay, positron storage ring. F uh, fission fusion hybrid molten salt reactor. Halberd engine. 4600 takes intake air. High altitude liquid breathing engine with rotating de detonation. Much more versatile than the rapier. Well, so that ISP is basically based on it being a air breathing engine. It's basically like a rapier, but it claims... Oh! The game crashed. <laughs> okay, that doesn't bode well for the Halberd engine. Okay, so since the game crashed, uh, when I pulled out the Halberd drive, I'm going to set that aside for now, Halberd engine. Uh, its versatility is because it could switch fuels. Hex module ISRU converter. Well, once we hit that asteroid, we'll be wanting ISRU converters, that's for sure. What we're going to convert it to is a good question, because there's so many engines requiring so many different things. 
we should probably try to standardize on some fuel. Okay, uh, these are containment units. Uh, scanner probe? It's just a probe core. And then the Arcjet stuff. Arcjet RCS stuff. Inline, that's a reactor. Antimatter collector, we've seen a few of those, but these are specific to the IXS ship. Uh, you know, the one with this module in the front that looks very futuristic. Uh, warp drive ship kind of thing. Um, which also probably needs a little bit of textures and limited help there. But yeah, it's got a laser. Kerbstein drive support command adapter. Okay, well, I guess that's so that we can have a better front end. That's fine. Uh, Sage. Positive uh, surge. There's a surge, apparently. There's an antimatter reactor, storage, and an engine. Oh, but it's it's noticed there. It's uh, hmm. It says atmosphere. Inadequate for flight in thick atmosphere. Thermal nozzle. This is definitely sci-fi, but. I don't know. I, I guess it's supposed to be for the Mark II parts. But it's antimatter. But it's reading 266 seconds of ISP right now. That's because it's atmospheric. Mm, hydrogen gets 800. Methane gets 665. But lots and lots and lots of thrust. I really feel like, well, hydrogen intake air gets 2,000. Intake air methane does not. Methane intake air, I guess it depends on the order of things. Uh, here, this seems sensible. 5,000 seconds, pure liquid hydrogen. Uh-oh. Suited to the Mark II parts, but realism overhaul scales up the Mark II parts. Okay, well, this does have tweak scale on it, so we can solve that. Okay, and then Sage. All right, well, uh, this stuff is mostly for immense amounts of thrust. But even with this small tank of hydrogen, we get 2,650 meters per second. Let's say we do more with that. You know, let's say we have a space plane. And we want it to be a single stage to orbit space plane. I think that's doable with this engine. 10,000 there. Two minutes! Probably you don't want all that acceleration, so we'll probably thrust limit that somewhat. <laughs> um, five minutes can get to orbit. 37 tons. And the engine is most of that. <laughs> The engine is overwhelmingly... Uh, that's a really heavy back end. It's going to be really tough to balance this plane effectively with such a heavy back end. I guess you'll have to put a really heavy front end on it so you'll have a lot of passenger capacity or something. Does it need radiators? A little bit. 174 megawatts. We might as well slap them on. Surface mounted ones, these guys. It says, oh, but total heat production up here is 81.78. Uh-oh. Um, can you have less of that <laughs> by any chance? It's raw output is all that. Reactor power control does limit the heat production. It does reduce our thrust, though, which is fine. We can, well, I don't know if that has any effect after we limit the reactor. We can't limit the reactor enough to just have this amount of radiator though. But we only need it to work for a short amount of time. How quickly can it explode? Let's see, set orbit. Works on the ground, but uh, that thrust wave ratio was actually lower than I thought. Okay. 
You better be able to maneuver if you're going to be a space plane engine. It's got thrust vectoring and everything. Didn't see. Alright, it does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't seem to be accumulating waste heat so quickly that I would be worried it's going to blow up before using all of its fuel. So this is probably alright as far as radiators are concerned. But we, we, we are relying on antimatter here. It is using it at a prodigious, prodigious rate, um, but not fast enough that it's going to run out of the antimatter before it runs out of the liquid hydrogen. But if we wanted more delta V out of it, it would. It's still really heavy on the back end. Our center of mass is, where is it? Right here, because the camera points at the center of mass. All right, so with that highly specific purposed engine, specific to the Mark II parts, I think I'll wrap it up here for today. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get my GPU situation resolved and next time we'll break up the monotony of going through the engines by trying to get to the asteroid. But if I don't get it resolved, we'll just continue with the engine examination so that I get a full list and everybody else watching can potentially get a full list of uh, the possibilities here so that we are properly uh, informed about our capabilities. Liquid core reactor engine would be nice. Uh, that's uh, So uh, this is Sage. There's also a Surge. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe it's not the last one. Okay, the uh, Surge is like this. Why is it like this? I mentioned Surge, but why, why is it so big? It's got Okay, well, we have to change propellant. Right now it's in atmospheric, which uh, claims to have low ISP, but you're sucking it in, so it really doesn't matter. And that's a lot of thrust right now. Maybe it's all thrust. But here it only says a thrust weight ratio of 2. But it's huge. Uh, it adds um, 64 tons to our mass. It seems to have less efficiency. I guess maybe it's a older design, so the surge will come first. But yeah, I, I think there's a fusion one and it's older, and this one is an antimatter one and newer. So I think that's the idea. So this one's heavier. Why does it say forward? Because I scaled it up. It's more than 14 tons. It's initially 14 tons, but I scaled it up, so it's really heavy. Okay, so this is just the older model, and that's the newer antimatter model. Okay, so yeah. This uh, liquid core reactor engine could be an uh, initial thing. It's a fission one, but we'll examine for stuff later on. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.